come across a lot of racist families who wouldn't like their children to marry uh, a revert. And when they tell me that, look, I, the, the, this person will never marry a revert. Yesterday, I t- this morning, I was speaking to someone in the U.S. And I said, you know what? I think if, if Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu was here to marry you, I don't think your father would have agreed to get you married to him because... It's crazy. Yeah, I promise you. Because he, did, he doesn't tick the boxes your dad once uh, ticked. And wallahi, it's a fact. And, and this is the thing. And, and, and uh, I have had the opportunity to speak to many parents. Some of them, I just give it to them as it is. Listen, you know what? I don't think you would accept Bilal ibn Rabbah if he came to propose to your daughter. And yet he's from, from those whose footsteps were heard in Jannah. Allahu Akbar. It's a fact. Allahu so, Akbar. so this is the type of thing we face. People don't want their kids to marry reverts when all the Sahaba were, were reverts. Subhanallah. You thought of that. Subhanallah. It's amazing. Yeah, I think I think it's very very important to think of things like that because uh, I I just think it comes down to I was speaking to a brother yesterday and I was explaining to him you know he was asking me for advice on marriage and I was explaining to him something that I've learned myself throughout my life and I think all of us we learn these things and Allah shows us these signs in our lives and and these signs are that the solution is in Islam and. I'm sure Mufti, even yourself, I mean, you, you may even agree that many of the people that actually come to you for advice, they actually know what they need to do. Correct. But, but it's just... They just need to hear it again. And yeah, perhaps, yeah, and it's just the act of doing it. Yes, it's you're just, right. It's just doing it. And sometimes it can be hard to do it, but when you do it, you're, and, and, and you know that you've done the right thing, you will feel that tranquility. You will feel yourself become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's like as a father, I mean, uh, I, I'm not a father, but I'm saying as a father, I can imagine that... If, if a revert comes to you, maybe from a cultural perspective, you can't understand why some people would say no. But however, imagine your mentality as a father, a father thinking, you know what, I'm going to do this for Allah. She wants to marry him, he wants to marry her. I don't see any problems with him, except the fact that his skin color is a little bit darker than mine. I don't see any problems with his. I'm going to accept him for the sake of Allah. Maybe just because you've done that, Allah will put barakah in our marriage. Is Absolutely. that not the way that we're supposed to think? It is the way, and if there are legitimate reasons, you can you can mention them. But if there is no legitimate reason, and the the people are ticking the boxes, and there is keen interest on both sides, then I think you know what, let it be. Hmm. I'd rather my child make something that I would consider a little mistake than to actually lose them completely. And at times, you know, we have to make sure that we do what pleases Allah always. Actually, you know, if we speak about the opposite, you, you yourself, as someone that people come to for advice all the time on on these situations. Have you seen that when people don't listen to this Islamic advice and then they actually do end up marrying, for example, someone from their own race that the daughter didn't want to marry, it ends up wrong? Can I tell you, I know of many, many parents, many. I'm actually in this for more than 20 years. I know of many parents who deny the daughters and the daughters grow very old and they never, ever end up marrying because no one then marries them. And sometimes I know of people who have then married, as you've said, within what pleased the parents and they were divorced. And it was a very ugly divorce, so ugly that you wouldn't imagine that Muslims would behave in a way that even the non-Muslims don't. Uh, you know, when it comes to custody of children, when it comes to yeah. uh, being civilized and when it comes to fulfilling their rights. It's 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 strange. You get to see the true colors of people when things go wrong, you know. So I, I've seen that. I've seen people quit the deen. I know of a family where they, they rejected for the, 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 the daughter to marry someone uh, that she wanted. And later on, that, that girl actually quit the deen and went away and she was gone, uh, you know, out of Islam completely. And uh, the parents, I don't know. I wonder what they must have thought and felt. But that's what happened. That's what happens when, you know, I say when you have a business, and a customer walks in, you're happy and excited because it's rizq that Allah sends. Person walks in, shows interest in your goods and commodity, it's rizq. The same way when a person comes and shows interest in your child, it's rizq from Allah. If you're going to kick it away, perhaps Allah might not give you something else. And He may give you something worse than that because you kicked it out. SubhanAllah. Every proposal that comes in, every interest in your child that comes through, uh, you know, it's, from, it's Allah's rizq that's coming. You, if, if it ticks the box, you sell the goods. SubhanAllah. Allahu Akbar. We, Allahu Akbar. Would do, we would do it for money and pounds, but mm. we wouldn't do it bec- with the relationships. Mm. And a lot of the time, sadly, these children sometimes are having relationships already in haram. Yeah. They're just coming to you to rubber stamp it. And you know, if you're not going to do it, they're still going to keep on going in haram. I, w- we help a lot of cases of that nature. Yeah. And what, what, the relationship with their parents is so weak that their parents don't even know what's going on. They wouldn't believe. 
Yeah, subhanallah. Imagine marrying a woman who later on tells you that I never ever wanted to marry you. I was actually uh, wanting to marry someone else. I mean, that's craziness. And that type of fraud is being committed by the parents of those who don't want to see that light. I don't know what they're going to answer Allah on the day of judgment. May Allah make it easy. Subhanallah. I mean, what about from the children's perspective, uh, Mufti? Like when, 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 let's say, for example, your father, you know that he's wise and you know he's trustworthy and you know that your mother is the same thing and they're not racist people and you know that they're not racist people. You know when they are and you know when they're not. But they're genuinely saying this person is not good for you. Yes, yes. You shouldn't go for this. Yes. But you've done haram now and you've caught a lot of feelings for this person. You yes. have, and you know how it goes, you know. And, and, and you just don't want to let go of this girl Because you're going to go through pain and heartache And you just want to marry this person Even though deep down You know that you should be listening to your parents What should a child do in that situation Who's like 19, 20, 20? You see very sadly number one is it's a betrayal of the covenant with Allah Number yeah. two it's a betrayal of the parents You know parents have done a lot of good They've really helped and they're being honest Number three is it doesn't mean that you've sinned with someone that you now need to marry them. No, that's something that people need to get out of their systems. You've sinned with someone. It doesn't mean if, if, they're, if they're worth marrying, you know, and Tobas happened and so on and the marriage does occur, it's one thing. But uh, it doesn't mean that you have to actually marry the, the person when you know it's a blunder and it's a mistake. We've yes. had people, I'm talking of real life, and I know some in some countries they, 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 they think it's taboo to say what I'm about to say. Uh, but we know in, we, we face these challenges. If someone is impregnated, it doesn't mean that the nikah needs to happen and so on. It it depends who, who on earth the person is. Sometimes you've made one mistake and now you're going to go and make a much bigger mistake, you yeah. know. Yeah. So you need to seek advice uh, yeah. Matters like these You need to find out the Islamic systems And the rules And what's the do's and the don'ts There are a lot uh, But getting back to it Parents hold a very very high value in Islam uh, But wherever they are unreasonable And telling you that Which is in the disobedience of Allah There is no obedience for them uh, And that's why if you look carefully Most of the places Allah doesn't speak about obedience of parents he speaks about being kind to them you know ihsan is a word it's goodness it's kindness but uh, the, the word ta'a ta'a which means to follow to obey it comes where allah says fala tuti'uma so don't obey them in what when they're asking you to do something that's in association of partnership with Allah, it's sinful, etc. Allah says, in that case don't fall, don't obey them, but be kind to them, reach out to them, talk to them uh, in, in a very respectful way, fulfill their rights. May Allah make it easy. Amen. We really I don't want to belittle the standard and the and the level of yeah. parents in any way. Of Many so. parents are suffering because of the uh, the challenges of the globe and their children getting caught up in them. But uh, at the same time you have parents who are also, you know, uh, worried about what the neighbor's going to say, worried about m what my family's going to say, worried about what the community's going to say. I know of uh, brothers who will tell their own brother, if you allow your daughter to marry that guy there, you know, you better watch out. You're, you're, you're opening the door for our daughters and they're going to trouble us and so on. So we're going to cut ties with you. So that's when the brother says, I'm not going to let this happen. And you don't, my brother. Um, you're a man. You've got, to, you've got to make decisions based on what Allah has taught you. Not yeah. worrying about people. Exactly, subhanAllah. And I think if you make Allah and His Messenger and what they came with the criteria for how you're going to live your life, you're going to have a peaceful life. It's very, I like to think of these things in terms of an equation. That's true, you that's know? very true. When you think, of, if, if you're going to follow that, then you're going to be happy. If you're going to go against that, you're going to see, you're going to put obstacles in your way. It will catch up with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. subhanAllah. May Allah make it easy for us. I mean. I mean